Thanks. Hey, Rich, we may have our Zoom listeners, Facebook listeners, fans that you just keep God in mind and go forward into this worship. Without Him, we will be no one. Lift up your minds, boys and guys, we will prepare to be led in time. The look of our voices, sing to our Lord. Be led in song by the Lord. Our first selection is page number 881. I'm satisfied with just because we love a little silver and a little gold, but it's necessity for the rest of the time. I want a gold one and silver black. I got a scripture just over the hilltop. Is that my name? And 
Stand up, stand up for Jesus, good soldier of the cross. Then I, his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory until victory, his army shall he be. Tell every foe his banquet. For Christ is Lord and Then up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet song will be. For to the mighty comfort in his sins glorious day, we never can that serve him but his son of earth the courage with pride, with and strength to spring the bones. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, and in his strength alone. He all flesh will fail you, he dare not trust your own. So put on the gospel of Today come from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. That's Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And it reads, Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. These Thou also be tempted. Be ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. The rich Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1 through 2. Let's all see. Good morning, church. Good morning. Let us move out here. Great God, our Father in heaven, we are thankful for this day. We are thankful for you blessing us to come to this place and worship you in spirit and in truth. We are thankful, dear Father, for you bringing us through another week. We are thankful, dear Father, for you continuing to shower your love upon us. And Father, we come this morning with our hearts open to receive your word, to learn more about what we can do to be pleasing to you. Father, we pray that our worship this morning will be our very best because you deserve our best. We just thank you, dear Lord, for you waking us up, for giving us the right frame of mind, and 
use of our limbs to help this place to our angels. These things we ask in the name of Christ Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. Next lesson is page number 535. Page number 535. Why have this? I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land. The hell is the world that is a sacred day. Yes, I'm in the glory land. I'm in the glory land. I'm in the glory land. Page 904, the song encouragement, the present selection for the sermon, the page number 650. Page number 650, all have, let us see. And there's a call down ringing over the rest of his in the light. And there are souls to rescue, there are souls to save in the light. In the light, in the light, in the light, the blessing God is supposed to light. They shine, the souls of souls, souls of souls in the light. The blessing God is supposed to light. They shine, the souls of glory. And we have heard the message of the Lord to be in the light. And the golden offering at the cross, we praise in the light. I sing the light. I sing the light. The blessed words is for the light. They shine. So, 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 so,
So even when we don't always do it, God is God is still God. Yes, he is. And so God is still God in spite of us. And I'm thankful to our God. I'm thankful that He saw fit to give us another opportunity this morning to assemble with our we're able to come together and worship Him. If you're joining us in the line, and if you're visiting this morning, you know you are on the guest. We appreciate your presence. We know you could have gone anywhere to worship, but especially if you're joining us online, that you could have discovered uh, going any congregation and yet you decided to, to sit here and to, to, to lock on with us this morning. So we thank you. And we pray that you might be encouraged by our worship. And you also might be inspired enough to serve God. Or if you haven't obeyed God, to consider yourself and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray God continue to bless us and, and God will continue to help us. I want you to sing every number 200 and. One hundred and Four hundred and twelve. Jesus, hold my hand. I have not traveled through this terrible land. Jesus, hold my hand. 
412. We have it. As I travel through this road, God, there is a gentle water. It leads me safely through the sickness, and it is the cross of Calvary. And this would be my brother, Lord, he takes around me to the best I can. For oh, I need a light to guide me day and night to the cities of all my hands. The sick and the sick, Jesus was a woman in love. He said, We're going through this and it's been wrong after all. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, right, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burden, and so fulfill the law of Christ. This morning, I thought I'd attempt to conclude the lesson and the sermon from last week. That Christ is the end of the law. Christ Jesus came from heaven and suffered down on the cross. He was buried in the cross again the third day. Jesus rose from the grave. All power was given unto him. And Jesus was in that moment when he went to the cross. It says in Colossians 2 14, he nailed the law to the cross. Right. I am mindful, and I, I ended last week that there are people who are saying, uh, well, Well, if we, if, we, if we can't keep the Ten Commandments no more, and, and, and that's been nailed to the cross, and, and that's gone, but what do we do? So, well, so you're saying, so you're saying we can keep a, a committed dog to us, a steal, you, we can do that. And so, um, I wanted to set forth. As I mentioned to you last week, that Moses said in Acts chapter 3 and verse 22, 23, that a prophet like unto me, that the Lord your God shall raise up. Moses told his brother in the way back then. He said, The Lord shall raise up a, a prophet. Unto you, among your brother, like unto me, Moses said, he says, and him shall be in all things whatsoever he shall command. And whosoever shall not be that prophet shall be cut off. And then when you go to Matthew chapter 17, Jesus takes John, James, and Peter with him, and they go into the the Mount of Transfiguration, the day he was transfigured, and Moses and Elias was there. And Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. We've got a real free time for that. One for you, one for Elias, one for Moses. Says, While he was yet speaking, God from heaven said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear me him. Right. It is Moses that said, God's going to raise a prophet like me, and you ought to hear him in all things. Not me, but hear Jesus. And Moses being in the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus. And Elias, the prophet. Peter said, Lord, we ought to do something because of this special occasion. And Jesus is here, Moses is here, and Elias. We ought to get a free tabernacle. And while they were yet speaking, while 
uh, whether God interrupted and said, this is my beloved son. I want you to hear him. I want you to hear Jesus. And so it, it, it I think causes people to say or to wonder, well, what do we do? Because most people are religiously, most people religiously are just used to following the law. So, so, so we say. But I'm just going to set forth for you this morning. We follow Jesus. As Christians, we follow Jesus. I want you to go with me to Hebrews chapter 9. You know, the Bible says, <clears throat> if you go to 1 Thessalonians chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul is there writing to the church, and he, he gives the church, I said, just those little antidotes to live by. He, and he is telling them in verse 17, he said, you ought to pray without ceasing. He says, verse 18, in everything give thanks. But this is, this is pleasing unto God. And he, he is just in that whole, in that whole chapter at the end, Paul is just look at those that he tells the Christians basically to live by. And when you get to verse number 20, he says, Prove all things. Hold fast to that which is good. And so what Paul is telling them, and, and, and even in that little moment, he said, here's what you do. He said, what, what you do as Christians, he said, you prove because if you think you ought to be doing it, he said, you ought to prove. If we ought to follow that, and somebody raise up and say, well, this is what we ought to do, Paul said, prove it. And then he said, hold fast to that which is good. Because if you can't prove it, don't you follow it. That's what he tell them. And I tell you that in our day and time, that people are following stuff and they can't prove from scripture. Because it has, it cannot be because you think it's a good idea. It can't be because that's what you think. It has to be based on scripture, and you gotta be able to prove it from scripture. That's what he wants the Christian to do. And so I'm wanting you to look with me this morning but in Matthew, or rather in Hebrews chapter 9, and verse number. Well, when you, you can do all of nine, but when you, when you get to Hebrews chapter 9, 15, because he's talking about the apostles before that. When you get to verse number 15, the Bible says what? For this cause he is to say, for here. this cause Jesus. Is, is the, the mediator, mediator of the New Testament. He is the mediator of the New Testament. That by means that of by death. Mean, how did he tell you how? By means of death. The redemption of the transgressions of transgressions. That was under the first testament. That were under the first testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Go on and read. Well, where a testament is saying, now here's what he says. See, Jesus nail the law to his cross. What's so interesting is that, uh, that, that, that Jesus came to earth while the law was existed and lived under the law. And so Jesus lived under the law because where there is a testament must be the death of the testator. So the law was in force as long as Jesus was on the earth. Go ahead and read what he said. He said, now, where a testament is, that was supposed to be the death of the testament. He that gives the testament. And so if we put it in layman's terms, where there's a will, right. if you, you know, like, like some of y'all, you know, got a lot of money, and you want to decide what's going to happen, a lot of money, a lot of property. Y'all know what I'm saying. You decide what I'm going to do with that. I want to know what becomes of that when I'm gone. Then you sit down and you write out your will. Now, 
your will is good. But if you decide in your will, because you got a lot of money, you want to leave me 50000 I'm not suggesting that. Just an example, OK? That's in your will. But I can't get the money. You know why? Because you ain't there. It is Jesus in the Mount of Transfiguration. And he goes up there. And, and Peter and James and John is there. And Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. And he started talking about building three tabernacles. And God from heaven said, this is my son. I want you to hear him. And when they come down out of the mountain, Jesus looks at Peter. He said, now, Peter, don't you tell this to nobody until the Son of Man be risen from the grave. Good teacher. You see, the reason that matters is because even though Jesus began to teach a lot of things, even though he wrote his will, he wasn't dead, y'all. Right. Even though you left me the 50,000, you put it in your will, I can't get it. You ain't dead. And so here it is, Jesus, it says, where there's a, where a testament is, that must first be the death of a testament. Go to read what he said. Or testament is a force. Is a force. After you die. Otherwise, Otherwise it's a no strength. It's a no strength. You know why? Because you can change your mind and say, oh, I don't think you know if it's dying or not. I'm giving that to Brother Rodolfo. Bro. And you can change it. Go ahead and read what he said. He said, he said it, it ain't no good. Neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. The first testament was not dedicated without blood. When Moses has spoken, and everything, Moses has spoken said, everything, told the truth for blood, God. and he dedicated it. Jesus went to the cross and died on the cross. He shed his blood for the New Testament. Amen. Every time we come together in, in uh, 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 and we do communion, First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse twenty-three, Paul says, "I, I, I wrote says I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night he went to us." Betrayed, took bread. And when he had break it, he said, This bread is my body. And then he took the cup and he said, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Right. You see, Moses took blood of animals and he dedicated the Old Testament. He shed that blood. And that was in force, but it was in force as long as there was no other testament. Right. You see, as long as Jesus was alive, the Old Testament was in force. So here's what you got to know. A lot of folks would say, well, well we, we can follow the Old Testament then. Because Jesus followed the Old Testament. When you go to Mark chapter 19, and, and you can read it later, but, but, but when you go to Mark the 19, this young man came to Jesus. And he wanted to know what he needed to do to inherit eternal life. Jesus told him, he said, he said, good master, what, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus told him, keep the law, basically what he told him. He said, you don't know what the law said. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness, all that. And the young man said, I did all that for my youth. Know. Now, some folk will go there and say, Jesus told that man to keep the law. Go with me to Galatians chapter 4 and verse number 4. You see, Jesus told the young man to keep the law. And there's a reason for that. Because when you go to Galatians chapter 4, you know, the, the young man said, I, I've done all of that, Lord. From my youth up, what like I now? And Jesus read his heart. He said, the heart wasn't right. Oh, you got to hear it, now. You read Mark chapter 19, Mark chapter 9, verse 19. What's so interesting is Jesus read the young man's heart. And what Jesus said, and if, you, if you go there, you can underline it. You got to get your heart right. Right. He said, go sell all that you had. See, he trusted in his riches. And Jesus told him, go sell everything you got. And he went away sorry because he had great riches. Right. And people look at that and say, well, Jesus told that young man to keep the law. Verse number four of Galatians chapter four, the Bible says what? 
But when the fullness of the time, time, fullness has, come, of time has come, God sent, God sent forth his son, made of, woman, made of a woman, made and he was made under the law, and to redeem him from the law, so that we might receive the adoptions of what? Of sons. Of sons. And because ye are sons, because we are sons, God, God sent forth the spirit of our son into our heart. Our Abba, Father, is because of what Jesus did. But while Jesus was alive, y'all, the law was still in effect. And they couldn't tell that young man to obey what I said because he had died. And when and and, and 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 he had shed his blood, and so the New Testament had not gone into effect. And so, uh, the Lord is about to tell you, but we can go to the Old Testament. Jesus told this young man, "Well, go to the Old Testament. I'm going to do the law. You see, it's not in force." Until somebody dies. Now, when you go to Matthew chapter 28, early one Sunday morning, you know, they killed Jesus. And they grave, they buried him. But early on Sunday morning, he rose from the grave. And he was seen, and then they went to the grave looking for Jesus. And you know, the stone had been rolled away. And Jesus, in process of time, in chapter Matthew chapter 28, he comes and he meets with his disciples. Now, Matthew has a short version of the story. Verse number 20, 27, uh, Matthew chapter 18, 28, and verse 17. What does verse 17 say? When they saw him. And he came and he met with his disciples. They worshiped him, but some doubted. And some of them doubted. <laughs> so that's just that. So you know when Thomas doubted, but and, 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 and John tells a, 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 a greater version of that, but some of them doubted. And so Jesus tells them, all oh, in verse 18, all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he says, Go ye therefore. Teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then verse number 20, you need to underline. He says, teaching them to do what? Observe all things whatsoever. Here's what you can do now because I have, I have died and I shed my blood. And he is resurrected from the grave. Now my God have mercy. I would jump down there. <laughs> That he is resurrected from the grave. And now in my testament, my will is in force. And because my will is in force, now I can command. It is God. It is God saying, this is my son. I want you to hear him. But you couldn't do it until he died and resurrected from the grave. Because he shed his blood. And now he comes to his disciples, he says, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe what he said. All things. All things what? Whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you even till the end of the world. I want you to go teach all nations now. If, if I just slow down and tell you, here's the thing I, I mentioned to you last week. But see, the hope of salvation for Gentiles was Jesus resurrected, Jesus dying on the cross and setting up a new will. Right. Because before that, the Gentiles were without hope. The Jews were the people of God and not us. Oh, y'all don't hear me. <laughs> the Jews were the people of God and not us. But Jesus going to the cross made it possible so that the Gentile might be saved. So when you read Matthew 28 and, and, and 
verse number 20, or rather verse number 19, and he says, go ye therefore and teach, what he said, oh. all nations. Because it's after he had resurrected from the grave. But before Jesus' death, it was only to the Jews. Right. But God through Jesus took that out of the way. And he says, I want you to go and teach all nations. And what I want you to teach them is whatsoever I have commanded you. Right. And not Moses. I want you to teach what I have commanded you. And so it is after Jesus' resurrection. So if you go with me to Acts chapter 1, when Acts chapter 1, it talks a little more, it expands a little bit more. Jesus meeting with his disciples who came and he met with them. And Acts chapter 1, verse 1 says, The former treatise had allowed the Theophilus. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the time that he was taken up. Everything that Jesus did until the time that he was taken up. And then verse number two said, and he, go ahead and read. Until the day in which, until the he, day was in which up, he was taken up. After that, he the after that, he through the Holy Ghost did and what? Commandments to the he apostles. gave commands. To the apostles. Who he, he gave a command to? to the he gave a command to the apostles whom he had chosen. He can, listen, we don't follow the law of Moses. As you read, as, as Galatians chapter 6 and verse 2 said, we follow the law of Christ. Right. You see, in, in Galatians chapter 6, what Jesus was teaching them. He said, brother, if any man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual resources to you. In the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, let you also be tempted. Verse number two, Galatians six, he says, Barely one he said, what I want you to do as Christian, not under the law, but as Christian, I want you to bear each other's burden. And now, so can I tell you the responsibility that Jesus gives Christians is that we got to look out for each other. Yes. Yes. We got to be concerned about each other. The Bible teaches in Ephesians chapter 5 that we are members of one another. Right. And it's hard to let somebody go off and say, well, that's them. You know, you ain't doing what right, but that's just them. No. We are members one of another. You can't just let folk go. If you know somebody, y'all just, I just this is a little pause for space identification, y'all. Right? And we can't just let folk do what they want to do in the church. As Christians, if I know you ain't doing right, I can say something to you. Here's what he's saying, verse two. Bear ye one another's burden. If that's your burden, it become my burden. We got to bear each other's burden. We can't sit over there and say, well, that's how you yeah, I know they're doing it. That's them. I just, I just let them go do what they want to do. You can't do that in the church. We are connected through Jesus, and we are all one. All right, I'm moving on. He says, so fulfill. The law of Christ, not the law of Moses. And what Jesus did, you say, well, what's the law of Christ? After Jesus resurrected from the grave, he came and he commanded and he told the disciples everything he wanted them to know. Go back to Acts chapter 1. He said, this is everything that Jesus did until the day he was taken up. After he was taken up, he gave command to the apostles whom he had chosen. That's verse 2. Verse 3 says what? To whom also he showed himself. To whom also he showed what? Himself alive. He showed himself alive. After his passion by many and five of the And he showed the disciples he had resurrected from the grave. Y'all keep that in mind because they were eyewitnesses of his resurrection. 
I'm not going to even get there, y'all, but you just got to know that he shows them he was resurrected from the grave. That is one of the qualifications of an apostle. In case I don't get there, y'all, is that all right? Right, right. The whole reason James, Jesus came and showed himself to his apostles is because they needed to witness how I witnessed his resurrection. Phrase number four, what the Bible says. Being assembled together with him. Being assembled together with him. This is why, this is before he resurrected. So Being man, assembled together with them, what he said. Commanded them that they should not he depart from Jerusalem. Commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Father. Wait for the promise of the Father. Which they said he. They said he. You have heard of me. You have heard of me. Wait, read. Well, for John truly baptized John truly the Lord. Baptized the Lord. And he shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Not many days hence. So Jesus sent to you. So stay here, and I'm gonna send the Holy Ghost on you. Go with me to John chapter, John chapter 14 and verse number 26. Jesus tells his disciples. See what I'm wanting you to know is that Jesus is commanding his disciples. He's commanding them. He's teaching them. But he had already did that. Listen, they walked with Jesus from the time he was baptized by John until the time. He was put on the cross. Right. And what Jesus did is he taught them. He taught them. John chapter 14, verse 26. The Bible says what? But the comforter. He said, and, and if you read back before that, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Right. I'm going to send a comforter to you. He says, I'm going to send a comforter that the world can't receive. He said, and the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Ghost, who the Father will send in my name. The Father's gonna send him in my name. He shall teach you all things. What he's gonna do? He's teach you all he's things. He's gonna teach you all things. And bring all and things to your what? Bring all things to your He's gonna bring everything back to your remembrance. What things are he gonna bring to their remembrance? Whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Everything Jesus told them, the Holy Ghost is going to bring it back to remember. Why, y'all? Because they are responsible for putting forth the law of Christ. The teaching. You see, where we were in Acts chapter 1, verse number 3, Jesus showed himself to his disciples by many infallible proofs. Right. Verse number three, and he says what after that? To whom also he showed himself alive, alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. And then he what? Been seen of them. He 40 was days. seen of them. How long? Forty days. Forty days. And what the world is he doing? Now? This is Jesus resurrected from the grave, and then he came with his disciples, and he spends forty days with them. What is he doing? Speaking of the things He was teaching the them about things doing what? Pertaining to, to the kingdom of God. Anybody had a conversation with somebody yesterday? You remember everything they told you? Anybody had a conversation with somebody last week? Long conversation. And you remember everything they told you? You see, it is Jesus teaching his disciples. What is so interesting? This is him. This is him. Now I might not remember everything you told me, but if you were, but if you refresh my memory, it'll come back to me. And you don't hear me. You see, Jesus taught his disciples. He spent 30, he spent like three years with them. Teaching them everything. They walked with Jesus. And then after his resurrection, he, Jesus came and he taught them 40 days. And then after he died, after he resurrected and went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Ghost that would bring back to their remembrance everything he had taught them. And then not only everything he had taught them, but he would teach them everything because they were responsible. 
in Acts chapter 2. So when you when you go to Acts chapter 2, the disciples realize, or, or the Jews realize that they had crucified the Son of God. Right. They crucified Jesus, and they say, man and brother, what must we do? Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you. And they did. Right. Verse number 40, those that gladly received his word, 41, were baptized. And that day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Verse number 41 says what? Then they did gladly receive they his word. They gladly his word. Were baptized. They were baptized. The same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And then it says this, y'all are on the line. And they continue steadfast. They continue steadfastly. In the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And breaking the bread. And breaking the bread. Here's why that's important, y'all. Because at Jerusalem's brother was dwelling Jews from every nation under heaven. And what Jews know is Judaism. Right. And what Jews know and are governed by is the law of Moses. That's all they know. And so here is, here is the disciples that just taught the first gospel sermon and they obeyed it. Now they got to do something. And the Bible says when they obeyed it, when they, when they were baptized, he said they continued steadfastly in the apostles. They didn't continue to do the law of Moses. They continued in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking bread. And they continued. So it is Jesus, uh, uh, rather Christ's command, the law of Christ is what they obey. And it is all throughout New Testament. I think John says it best. Go with me, first John chapter 2. In, in first John chapter 2, because see, what most people, well not most people, most religious folk don't realize, we don't follow law, we follow Christ. And you can't do Christ and law both. Before you go there, Earl, go, go Matthew chapter 5, let me show you. In Matthew chapter 5, it is Jesus meeting with his disciples. Uh, verse number one, it said, Jesus see the multitude, and he go up into a high mountain, and when his disciples come to him, he began to teach them. And he said, bless it, and he gave them the blessings. So it is Jesus with his disciples with him, and he began to teach them. When you get to verse number he says, listen at this, he says, except your righteousness exceed that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Your righteousness, you got to go past what the scribes and the Pharisees did. You got to hear this, y'all. Moses said, you shouldn't kill we ain't following law. We follow Jesus. So verse number 21, he said, you got to do better than what them folk did. Oh, you don't hear me, y'all. Christian, we got to do better than them. This is what they did, y'all. If the law said don't touch the chair, we don't touch the chair. That's law. Jesus said don't touch the chair. In order for me to please Jesus, not only do I not trust the chair, I got to not hold the touch. It's a whole different ball game when it came to Jesus. See, when you do law, if the chair don't get the job, you can grade right, you can pass right beside you. You know, you know how you kid, you know how you play. I ain't going to touch it. You see how close you become to it without touching it? You know what I'm saying? Right. That's law. Jesus said, I don't want you to do it like that. I want you to do it more deeper than that. I want you to not even go around it because I don't want to even look like I want to touch the chair. The teacher. 
Watch what he says, verse number 21. He said, well, because the Lord done that, you mean I can kill? What he said in verse 21. He have heard. You have heard. That you said by them, said of, all by them of all time. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Who shall shall kill shall, shall be the angel of the judgment. But I say unto you. I say unto you. And who shall be angry. You can't God. even want to kill him. Without a cause to Listen, y'all, what he's really teaching is that not only do I not want you to kill, but I want you to not even get in the position where you be so angry that you want to kill your brother. That's Jesus. In his past law, drop down to verse number 27. He said, well, you don't do law, you can do kill, you can commit adultery. What did Jesus say? You yeah. heard then it was said by, them, was said by them of old time, by law. Thou shalt not, not commit adultery. But I say unto you. But I say unto you and this is what I say. Now you gotta know Jesus is teaching all of this stuff long before he was crucified. But here's the deal. It's not until he died on the cross that it became a thing. And once Jesus died on the cross, rose from the grave, he said, now you can go command the teach. And you start teaching what Jesus said. What Jesus wants is more than just you doing stuff. He wants your heart. The teaching, brother. I'm telling you, he wants your heart. And listen, God, I can say you, you got to watch it. Because you just, you can be just like the church at Ephesus. In Revelation chapter 2, they were doing great works, but they had lost their first love. He said, I got all against you. You can be doing everything Christ wants you to do, but your heart ain't in it, and God will reject you. Because past love, Jesus wants your heart. He said, you have heard it said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. What he said? But, but I, I said, said to you, but if you shall look on if you woman, look on a woman and lust after her, and, lust after her, and want to have her, you committed adultery with her already. Come on. That ain't the law, because the law is you can want a woman uh, as much as you want to see it and lust after it and stay there and do it all day long if you have to see it. But, uh, but in Christianity, you can't do it. Teach. You can't look at some woman and think about how good she looks and, and fantasize about you being with her and say, Well, I ain't touching. Oh, y'all don't have to be teaching. Say, I ain't touching. And Jesus said, But you see, y'all know that's for women too. Is that all right, y'all? <laughs> but that's Christ law. And as you go through Matthew 5, you see all of that. You have heard it said by them of old time. But I want you to do something different. It is Christ, it is, it is Christ commanding us, not just by law, but stuff past that. Right. Now go first John chapter 2 and verse number 2. See, because what I'm wanting in your mind is Christ Jesus command. He commands, but his commands is deeper than just thou shalt not. I don't want you to do it, but I want your heart in it. But he said, verse number two, and John he, said, and he is the propitiation. John said that Christ Jesus is the propitiation for our sins, for our sins but not for our only, but, but for the sins, the sins of the whole world. Go ahead, read. Hereby we do, Hereby know, we do know, that we know him. That we know him. him. Because what? If, we if here's how we know we know. If we what? Keep his commandments. If we keep his commandments and do what? If Go ahead. Say, I know him. If you say I know him, keep his commandments. Keep his not a commandment. He's a liar. He's a liar. And the truth, and the truth day in it. Go ahead. Who so keep his word? Who so? So here's what he said. It's his word. Amen. Whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily the love of God will perfect. Hereby know we that we are in him. Hereby, this is how we know we are in him. 
because we do those things pleasing and acceptable in this life we teach. It's about the heart. God, I, 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 I just, listen, I want you to hear this because it is what Christ wants. Romans chapter, I mean, Romans chapter six. And I tell you, if you haven't obeyed, if you haven't obeyed Christ Jesus, then you have to do it. Right. You have to obey his doctrine. Right. So in Romans chapter 6, verse 17, it says, God be thanked that you were a service of sin. Right. Y'all see that? He said, but you have obeyed how? From the heart. I want your heart in. You have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine that was delivered to you. And that form of teaching, doctrine, teaching, is what Christ commanded. Right. And God, time won't allow me, but you got to know, you got to follow what Jesus said. You see, the world, the religious world, will go, the religious world, they will go back to the law to get something they want to do and not realizing that Christ Jesus is commanded. If you're going to please him, you got to do what he said in John 14 and verse 6. In John 14, verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment, right. what I command. When you obey Jesus, you got to do it from the heart. Right. Verse number Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephesians chapter 6, Jesus is actually teaching. He is teaching about parenting and, and, and husband and wife and slave and owner. In Ephesians chapter 6. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Slaves, obey. And when you get, I want you to hear this because it's about what we do. It's not just, listen, it's, just, it's not just about don't touch the chair. And I tell you, if you're not careful, you'll miss heaven because you say you did all the right things, but you didn't do it in the right way. Oh, y'all hear me. If you ain't careful, you'll miss heaven. Because you say, I did all the right things. I didn't touch the chair. But you didn't do it in the right way. Because I want your heart to be where I don't want to. Lord, I, I'm here. Not because you say I need to be here this morning. Because I want to be here. Because I love you. you Got to put your heart in it. And when Jesus is teaching, and what you will see all throughout New Testament is that Jesus doesn't want you to just follow stuff. He want you to want to. Verse number six, girl. Ephesians chapter six, the Bible says what? Not with every, not with our service. No, it's not verse five, so it makes sense. It's sure. talking to service. He tells the servants, he said, because I want you to obey your master. Go ahead, look. Be obedient to them that are your master. He said, now, be obedient to them that are your master. What he said? According to the flesh. According to the flesh. With fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. And singleness of your heart. And singleness of your heart. As unto Christ. Go ahead, what he said, what now? As unto Christ. He said, now, what you do, listen what he tells the servant. He said, now, when you obey your, your master, he said, I want you to do it. He said, but I don't want you to do it because of that man or whoever your master is. I want you to do it like you're doing it to me. And that's how we do all things as Christians. Pass laws. Watch this. He says what? Not with I serve. He says, but I don't want you to do it. I serve. As men please us. As men please us. But as the servants of Christ. He said, I want you to do what you do as the servant of Christ. Now listen to what he said. What he said? Doing the will of God. Doing the will of God. From your heart. It's got to be from your heart. Y'all listen. It's got to be from your heart. It has to be. Your heart has to be in it. 
not just the motion, not just going through procedure, but with your heart is what God wants. Y'all know what's so, y'all know what, I was gonna say scary, it ain't really scary, but sobering. You know what's really sobering? Is God read all of our hearts. He reads all of our hearts. You see, the reason we don't do law is because we follow Jesus. And what Jesus wants is something more than just I serve men pleasing, doing the deed, doing the act. He wants us to do from the heart the things that he commanded us to do. Time won't allow me to tell you, but when it comes, listen, if we are following Jesus and we show up here to worship, everything we do has to be commanded by him. Amen. If we decide, if we decide we're gonna do anything, we need to check with Jesus first. The reason, you know, people come to Church of Christ and they say, man, Church of Christ sing, but y'all don't have no music. And I like music. Well, that's cool, but we ain't singing to you. Oh, y'all don't hear me. That's right. We're singing to Jesus. Wow. And if we're singing to Jesus, I want to know what he commanded. Amen. And what Jesus commanded is that in Ephesians chapter 5, and verse 19, it says, speaking to yourselves in songs, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, make a melody in your heart to the Lord. All right. You see, Jesus tells us how to, when we assemble as a church, Jesus tells us what to do. I don't listen to Moses. That's why when you assemble together and we come up here and tell you it's time to give, and the Bible says, now in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1, now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given all to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week that every one of you lay by his for as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. When I come. We don't tell you the time. Right. And the reason we don't tell you the time is because that ain't what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. Right. We don't use instrumental music because every time somebody say, we go, we gonna sing and we got music, they go back to the law to find the music. Right. But if you do New Testament, it ain't there. It ain't commanded by Jesus. Amen. And you gotta follow Jesus from the heart. Listen, now, you, now let me tell you something. You gotta hear this, right? I have to tell you this because it always bothers me. You see, if you don't please Jesus and he say don't touch the chair, you got to not walk to him. Well, Jesus never commanded us to sing with music. Right. That means every time I sing to the Lord, I'm making a melody in my heart, and I know I'm referring to the wrong one. I'm making a melody in my heart to the Lord. Not only do I not use music, I don't want to. Right. So why would we come together in this assembly and sing to the Lord, and we got a bunch of stuff going on trying to make it sound like we got music? Good teaching. My heart ain't right. Good teach. And we don't get that. Because God don't want us to just do. He wants us to do from the heart. You watch, you go to a lot of congregations and they got all kinds of people booping, 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 and the ch the ch the ch we trying to sound like we got what God didn't ask us for. Because what we have to do has to come from my heart, y'all. That's what God will do. That's what God is going to accept. And what people don't realize, if you're doing that stuff, man, you ain't putting your heart in it, and the Lord will reject it. Yo, I quit. Yo, listen, listen. Everything we do, when we take communion, the reason we don't do a Passover, because that's what God gave Israel. We do communion on the first day of the week. We don't preach law, we preach Jesus. 
I am thankful, y'all, because I told you last week what was so interesting in Christianity under Christ. I repent. I can start over. In Moses, I am stoned and I'm through. Give me Jesus. Our heart. We have to obey the Lord from our heart. From your heart. Doing the will of God. Let me just encourage you. We follow the law of Christ, not the law of Moses. For everyone that don't know Christ Jesus, law extends past anything Moses ever did. Because the law wanted to act. Christ Jesus wants the whole person. God, I pray God bless you, God. I pray God help us that we as God's people keep striving to do this. Keep striving to please Him with our whole heart. I pray God bless you, God. I, I, I'm mindful that I'm mindful that the Word of God is the thing that will save us in the end. Whether we have followed it or not. The Bible said that the books are going to be open. We're going to be judged according to the things that they did. I want to follow Jesus. And I hope we do too. This morning, if you're here and you're not a Christian, you need to be one. If you have not obeyed the gospel, Hear that Jesus came from heaven, suffered, died on the cross, and he said, He was buried, and on the third day he rose again. Believe that. Believe not only that Jesus died, but he died for you. And then be willing to repent of your sins. Change your way. Confess, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. You see that confession about death and Christ and bring life and blessing to you. And then be buried in baptism with Christ for the mission of your sins. All of your sins will be washed away. You become a new creature in Christ. Live faith unto death. And you'll receive the final life. If you're a Christian but you haven't been where God would have you to be, you fall short and you want to get that right with God. I'm going to encourage you. You can't confess. We'll pray with you and for you. God will forgive you and all of us together keep working out our soul salvation. So if you stand here, you can actually make the known. Let's together we stand and together we sing. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace itself? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?
And Father in heaven, Father, we thank you for this day and for all your blessings. Thank you for being our God. Thank you, Father, for loving us enough to send your son to die for us. Father, I pray that you uh, continue to bless us and help us as we continue to seek your will. Help us, Father, to never seek our own way and our own will, but that we may strive to please you. Father, we are thankful for your great blessings that you granted unto us each and every day. Help us to be mindful that every good gift, every perfect gift, comes from you. We thank you for everything you've done and everything you continue to do, Father. We ask you. We are thankful, Father, that you have blessed Alan with everything he's gone through this week. And we pray, Father, that as he go forward, that he continue, Father, to, to trust you, to lean on you, knowing that you're able to do everything he has to do. Father, we pray for Tracy, the same, Father, that her trust and hope will be in you. And, you will bless all of those doctors and nurses and, and the things that they prescribe, that it will be a source of help for her and for her body to get back to some type of normalcy. Uh, we pray that they will bless her, bless her, bless her, as they stand by her and help them through the whole process. Father, we thank you. We love you. We ask your blessing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Mother Gilgis. Well, our fellow for you. Thank you for your time. Now, before you put off the God, just want to you give back a portion of that which he bless you with. Not of necessity, not of a uh, bit of our thought, but God loves. Children give to that man as your thanks for the offer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening, this afternoon. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Yes. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who uh, served or did the ultimate sacrifice for all of our sins. We thank you. We, as you bless this offer, but I may be used in the upkeep of your kingdom. It is in your son's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Walking in sunlight of a wonder, hurrying over the mountains through the Jesus, I said, I'll never forsake thee from the sea my hand, never can fail. And I think Interpreting for Lord's Supper, let's turn to page 354. That's page 354. Listen. 
One to first Corinthians. You have a strong at verse 23. For well, I have received of the Lord that which also I will give unto you. That Jesus, the same night which he was the tree, should be. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is open for you. This is it in your understanding. Chapter 3. First of all, my Father, which are in heaven, Father, you are pushed out one of his hands. I do have so many chapters to fill up and I'll be in my own house. Thank you for all those wonderful blessings you still have for us. All who come to you at this time, I thank you for this day. We pray to you by God. We pray that we take the clean hands and put them These prayers we ask in Christ Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. After the same time, also we took the cup. And we had some saying, This cup is the New Testament, and I will give you ye as often as you drink it in the numbers of men. But as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, and you show the Lord death until you come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthy, shall be gift of the body and unto the living of the Lord. And let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread. He may eat it and drink it down with him, eat it and drink it down nation to himself. Not discerning the Lord's body, for this cause, men are weak and sick from among them. And then he said, So pray. Father, we come to you once again, thank you for this cup, the death of the God in the Father, continue to bless us, continue to be with us. These prayers bless in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Good day, man. Amen. We're so thankful for every opportunity that we have to assemble the worship God and spirit of the truth. We're so thankful and encouraged for, for the brethren who are still here today and for those who are visiting with us. We're so thankful for your presence today. And we hope that the things that have been said and done here today will encourage you for the cause of Christ. Especially if you do not share our religious conviction, we hope that the things that are said and done here will arise your curiosity and any questions that you might have 
Concerning our conviction, our worship, what we believe, please feel free to add that we are equipped and ready to give a Bible answer for a Bible question. So thank you so much. And those who are busy with us via Zoom, Facebook, we thank you for your presence here with us today. We just hope that, that you will continue to um, tune in with us and, and every opportunity that you have to come and visit us in person that you will. We are a congregation who are serious about doing God's will and encouraging each other for the cause of Christ. And we want to encourage you to continue to encourage you. Remember our midweek Bible study um, each Wednesday night at 7 o'clock via Zoom. You can uh, come on, contact us through that, join in with us uh, through, through Zoom. And you can get that information off of our website. And we are uh, studying the book of Revelation. And it's a very, very good study. We're taking our time as we go through it. And we might have a better understanding of God's will and His will. I have a note here from Sister Carol Woods that Donald and Carol Ann will leave Thursday. February 16th for Lula. Brother Donald will uh, have back surgery on the 17th. Please remember them in your prayers. For sure, we will continue to pray for uh, good brother Don in any way uh, that we can uh, that we can serve you. Please don't hesitate to let us know. It's good to see those who have been out and not uh, been here with us. And uh, it's just good to see Sister Thomas and Bell to say something on last week. But it's good to see you. We're praying for you as you continue to manage your health issues. It's always good to see you. It's good to see Sister Woods back. Sister Woods, Brother Woods was looking a little sad over there the past few weeks. But he said, Man, I'm gonna have to bring my wife back a little early, a little sooner. So. <laughs> It is so good to see you, good to have you back with us, as well as others. Good to see Brother Matthew Thomas, you know, he works most Sundays, but it's always good to see him and his beautiful family, as well as others. Uh, I, I did Brother Helen's son. I, I, I said to him, Mike, man, Drake, forgive me. I'm having a senior moment. It's good to see you. As well as others, I, 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 I see my baby sister sit back there with Sister Dan. It's so good to see you. But please um, be careful to get out. Today we are our um, Super Bowl day. It's a lot going on. But please be careful. Whatever you do, root for the Cowboys. Amen. <laughs> it is to be for you, please be stand. We have clothes or something to see parents. It's good to see parents. No doubt. But, but please be careful today. We love the Lord and let our joy be low. Join in a song we sing the Lord. Join in a song we sing the Lord. For the surround the crown and the surround the throne. And we're marching to the beautiful, beautiful time. I am, we're marching upward to that. I am the beautiful city of God. Hey, Bobby. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to see another uncommon state. Thank you for um, putting it in, brother, is to deliver a strong message, something that throughout I've listened to it since someone and we brought in real life of it. Yes. Uh, thank you for making the body of Christ stronger and we prepare ourselves to, to be saved in your kingdom, brother. Yes. And I want you to see everything and please go to see and protect. But as we follow our birthday week, we're not today in our birthday week. And it's your wish to be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.